Greetings, YouTube. Um, I mentioned on a, on a recent crafting video that I was going to be fixing a door. And as you can see, the door needs to be repaired. And I want to put an opening in it. Well, I couldn't find a piece of wood to give me the reinforcement I needed. I need to find a piece of wood this wide. And they don't sell pre-made pieces of wood that wide. And I have no table saw and I have no thickness planer. So I can't make a piece of wood that thick. So because of that, I got myself a cat door, which I am going to install right down here, right about there on the door. And this is with, this came with it. Uh, I will not be using this because I do not want to listen to this thing flapping back and forth as I'm trying to sleep. It was uh, designed to be removed. You take that little plastic panel there out. And you can see that little hole right there. That's where the hinges were. Um, take that out and uh, Presto Changeo, you have a uh, an, uh, an instant pass through. So first thing I need to do is screw in a bunch of screws to reinforce the door that's delaminated. I'll then do the white side first, um, and when it's done, I'm going to turn it over and do the other side, and I'm going to drive one screw from all the way through here, through this, and into this uh, when, I, when I'm finished doing the the uh, other. Uh, reinforcements to kind of pull it all together. Yes, it's a cheap door, but it's an interior door. It's just in my bedroom and all it needs to do is keep the cats out and the lights out and cut down on the noise a little bit. So that's my next step is going to be to put a whole bunch of screws in this thing. Okay, I've discovered one small problem. This is MDF. Not taking the screws so well. This style on the hinge is wood. Screws are going in nice and flush the way I want them to. So the ones on this end stick out a smidge and frankly, I'm not too concerned about it. When I'm done with this, I'm gonna paint the other side so you're not gonna really notice the screws. And on this side, the inside of the, the, uh, the uh, bedroom, I don't really care that it's gonna show screws. I don't. <laughs> it's gonna be dark in the room most of the time when I'm in there. That's all I care about. So now it's time to brush this thing off and start doing some layout lines and figuring out how I want to uh, put the cat door in. All right, so here we have the layout lines. There's the center of the door. I scratched this in with my spiffy marking gauge that I bought at an antique shop, which works admirably. It's awesome. It's got a wood screw and it's, so it's antique. Um, so I've got the line there. And I'm going to now drill holes in uh, both corners here and down here uh, so I can then get my saber saw involved in this process. So there we have the door with the holes in it. So now I can start using the saber saw to cut out um, the space that I'm going to need to pass the cat door through the door. So there we go. There is a hole. <laughs> Ooh, shoe for the cat door and it fits nice and snug. I just gave up on these screws. I'm just going to spray paint these so you can't see them. I left one in there that's actually in wood and that one down there I can't put a screw in because I've got a screw going in that way. So that's actually doing something. It's pinning it in place. So I'm just going to not worry about it. Again, it's this is an interior door that's not going to take any stress. And you can see the really cheap interior structure which is cardboard. This is uh, that's cardboard. Yep, it is. <laughs> um, my original goal was to cut this hole and then to put reinforcing wood inside. But again, I couldn't find any wood the right size and I don't have the ability to modify the wood. So we went with the cat door. So next it's going to be is to take it off the sawhorses and I've got it clamped in place because I wanted to make sure I did not have the sawhorse underneath the hole when I started drilling and started cutting with my saber saw because I did not want to cut my sawhorse in half. So I offset it, clamped it in place so that it's, I can lift up the sawhorse. It's not going anywhere. Um, so now it's gonna be taking it off the sawhorse, leaning it down a little bit, get my spray paint out, and spray paint this up a little. So there we go, in the dying light of the setting sun, the completed cat installation. There we have my, still my favorite screwdriver set. So next step, take it upstairs and put it in place. Unfortunately, there was a casualty. This, which was my grandfather's, was hanging here on the wall. 
and the vibration of tapping the door back in place uh, caused it to fall off and it's dead now. I'll be getting rid of it. But here we go. This is the new cat door for the cats. Wow. Get quite a bit of hair coming through there. <laughs> it's kind of impressive. Um, we have the fan going at the moment, which pulls air through my bedroom and out an exit window. I have a fan pointed outside. So it brings a breeze drawing through the, through the building and uh, kind of impressed the fact that I didn't know it was quite that powerful. I do not normally keep the door closed when the fan's going, but it's closed while I'm sleeping. So there you have it, folks. Now, with the door now closed, um, let's see if I can get the cats to use it. 